OK, it's 6.05, so I'm going to get started. It's a really exciting night. I know you're all excited to get into InDesign. My name is Michael Smith. I teach in the ARC 1110. Many of you probably have met me at some point. Um, so I'm going to go over InDesign tonight. We're going to do one hour. We'll end at 7 on time. I'm going to go through um, InDesign. We'll go through a bunch of concept setups. I emailed all of your professors the PDF that I have here on my screen, what I'm going to be going through, as well as some links to some, actually, of my work from undergrad, funny enough, uh, that we're going to use to play some things in InDesign and work with. Uh, if you don't have the link or your professor didn't send it to you for some reason, um, you can just use any JPEGs or PDF files in your computer. It's fine. We'll get there in a little bit. Okay, before I get started, I just want to mention again that um, in your syllabus, it suggests that you, very heavily suggests that you purchase the Creative Cloud, which I have up here on my screen. And in the Creative Cloud, you have all of these softwares by downloading them uh, to your computer from the internet. I believe it's $19 a month. Um, all of these softwares combined are thousands of dollars, so I think the 19 a month is, is pretty cool while you're in school. Um, anyway, we'll be using InDesign, so hopefully everyone has already downloaded that, acquired that somewhere in the e interwebs, has it on their laptop. Uh, I'm using a Mac, as you can see. I think 90% of you have Macs. I'm not sure what the other tutorials um, we're using, but what I'll do here in the Mac is quite literally the same in a PC. I, I don't see anything different. Even the shortcuts are probably the same. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing I want to do is open InDesign. For me, it's down on my bottom tray. You might have one on the left or right. So we're just going to open that up. Um, and the first thing I like to do just when we're starting a tutorial or starting a file or I'm doing a portfolio for something is to just set up my file, set up my units, make sure everything is going to be working universally in my program, and then I can start doing all the work I need to do. So the first thing I want to go up to InDesign at the top of the page. And if you are paying for this, it should say your name or your email address and a couple things up here. I want to go to Preferences. So I'm going to InDesign, Preferences, and General. Okay, so in, inside General preferences, preferences, this is kind of like the background for the software, telling it all the different things you prefer it do, like use a US dictionary for spell check versus something else. Um, I like to first go down here on the left to Units and Increments. I prefer to work in inches, so under Horizontal and Vertical, which will be our page sizes, I like to switch that to inches and the vertical to inches. Um, there are many other types of measurement systems graphic designers use, industrial designers. Um, I'm going to stick to inches for today. Uh, in stroke, we'll talk about stroke later on. That's uh, what you are all very familiar with, line weight. Stroke refers to how thick a line is. I tend to keep it in points instead of millimeters. Uh, if later on you're very familiar with millimeters because you set up your CTB file in AutoCAD with that, you could switch to millimeters as well. But we'll leave that at points. Um, the rest of these should look relatively the same as my screen. If not, it's, it's not an issue. Also in here, we can just scroll through some of these. Um, grids are important. Um, you can choose the color that you'd prefer your grids to be at. I'm just going to default to the light blue. Um, and there's a couple other settings in here as well. Document grid, you can change its colors. We'll go over the document grid and all those in a bit. Um, there's dictionary. So what's nice about InDesign is um, you can do your resume in it, you can notate pages, and you can choose to have whatever language dictionary you want to use, and it'll uh, automatically update. So it'll, it'll find misspellings, which is great when you're making a portfolio for a job and you spelled you know, architecture incorrectly. I've seen it. Don't do that. Uh, we have spelling here as well. Autocorrect, you can put in some words that are not working. Um, and other things you might encounter later on. So that's all inside InDesign, Preferences, General. So these are all the general preferences. And if you buy Adobe package under your name, you can say Sync Settings. Once you set up these preferences, they're forever in there. So it's really convenient when you start new files, they'll always be in there. So if you've set your uh, preferences general and units to, oops, I didn't hit save, to inches, it should be good to go. Um, so I'm going to put this down here a little bit. Uh, the other thing I want to go over is um, units and increments, and I want to talk about grids as well. So I'm going to go to File, New, Document. We're going to start a new document. Hit OK. Should open up this little screen. At the top, we'll just leave it default. In the future, you can make your own settings and put them in here. Uh, the intent for this is to print, but there are many other intents, web or digital publishing. We'll just leave that print. 
Facing pages is when you're creating a book, you would have that selected because you're thinking about what's on the right and left side of a spine of a, of a book. For today, we're just going to assume it's one page after another, like a digital PDF would be, or, or a slideshow like that. So I'll uncheck facing pages. Let's put the number of pages in at five. And then page size, instead of letter, let's make that tabloid, which is 11 by 17, which you're familiar with. And on the right, we can toggle between our orientations, the width or height changing. Let's make the width 17 and the height 11. Under here, there's some other things called columns. We'll talk about that with grids in a moment, how we divide up the page. There's also margins. Right now, we'll leave them all at 0.5. They should be 0.5 inches, by the way, in your screen. Um, I can also talk about that later on. And bleed and slug would not really work with right now, so any of the, this arrow can just minimize that. We'll, we won't get into that. We hit OK. We should see a new uh, project appear on the screen. It should be called Untitled, um, and it has a blank page with this blue outline on it here. OK. Um, let me just see here. New document. Margins. OK. So in the new document, we have uh, a series of pages that we can open up here. Um, but before we do that, one thing to check if you've made a document previously or want to modify uh, something from the past, uh, you can go to File at the top again, Document Setup. And so this is kind of like what we just did when we did File New. Uh, but in Document Setup, I can go ahead and add more pages if I wanted. I can change the document to facing pages or I can change its size. Um, even though it's already been created, even if I had content on the pages, I can still edit the entire uh, document. So if I was making a 300-page book, I could change all 300 pages in one, in one click here, which is convenient. So in the home screen, we have a couple of uh, tools. There should be a toolbar over on the left-hand side. If you do not have one, raise your hand. The TA will show you how to turn that on under, underneath Window Arrange or Window Workspace. Um, some of the most common tools we use here, and I also put them in your PDF, I like to use uh, shortcut, shortcut keys, so I kind of listed that as well. The most common tool we use is the selection tool at the top, which is if I'm doing a certain command I want to get to it, I just hit the letter V, or I just hit escape, and I have this black arrow. Uh, we'll talk about this one here a little bit later on. And if you hover over anything in the program, it'll tell you what the shortcut is, so A for direct selection. And this is about editing a line more specifically than just grabbing it with the black tool here. Uh, okay. Then there's something else we have called the text or type tool. So this is really important. We're going to be working with type. If I click that or type the letter T, I can make a box inside of which, let me just make this big enough for you to see. I'll go over all this in a little bit. I can type, and it's in a box on my screen, and I can move that box around with the black arrow tool, right? I can make that box larger or smaller and add whatever I like in there. I can just say my name so it doesn't look like there's garbage on there. OK. That's the text, text tool. Uh, we also have a line tool, so similar to AutoCAD or Illustrator or other programs you might use. Over here is the line tool, which is the backslash hotkey. So for instance, if I was in my text tool, I could just hit this and switch to a line. I click once and drag my mouse around and create a line. Or another one, another one, right? I can hit Escape or the letter V, and I switch back to this arrow where I can pick a line, and I can move it around just by dragging it. No need to hit Copy like in AutoCAD or other programs. I can just drag it around. If I hit Alt on the keyboard, I see a secondary arrow show up on my screen. See that? I can pull as many of these lines around as I would like, and it's just copying them. It's a really quick way to make a copy of a line. Okay. What else do we have here? Also have the rectangle tool, which is over on the left-hand side here. So I can pull that out. I can make an ellipse, a poly polygon frame tool, a rectangular, rectangular one. Right? And that gives me a box. We'll talk about this a little bit later on. But it gives me something to paste images into if I know exactly what size I want them to be. I can also, with this box, paste uh, directly in and give it a frame or something in the future. That's over here on the left again in this toolbar here. Um, I also have another rectangular tool, which I can actually use to create um, objects on the screen. Right? So I could, theoretically, I could do a drawing with InDesign, but it would be really painful. Uh, but I can add this rectangle. I can change its shape. If I go to the corners, I could rotate it around. Um, so I can add notations or line work or rectangles, whatever I'd like, to um, an outline of my work, to a design portfolio, which is really helpful. 
I also have something called the free transform tool, which is over here. It's the letter E. And so if I wanted to take this box or this rectangle, for instance, and scale it up or down uniform to the proportions it already is, can select it, move around. If I hit the letter E and I go to a corner and hold down shift, I can, you can see it's scaling it appropriately. I'll go over this more once we start posting or placing photographs in here. Um, if I use the, this V or escape and I'm just clicking on this, I can change the box's size, no problem, but it's not relative to itself. So if I hit E or select this icon, free transform, I can then do that proportionally, right? So the box is changing. It's really convenient. Uh, we also have, so I hit escape or V to exit out of what I'm doing. Sometimes I want to just move around on the page. I can hit the space bar. I can hold the space bar down and this giant inflated hand shows up. And I can, I can move around uh, the screen or go to other pages up and down. I can also hit the letter H and do the same and have the hand permanently there. I like space bar because I can move something around and then return to what I'm doing. Again, I'm going to hit escape or V to come back to this. If I hit the hand, I can go back and forth or the letter V, and I'm back to the selection tool. Um, and the last most obvious, I guess, is the magnifying glass or the zoom tool. I can hit Z and click in or make a selection box. I can hold down Alt on my keyboard, and I can zoom back out. So I might want to center that whole page. In addition to Z giving me the magnifying glass or the icon, I can go to View at the top, and I can say Zoom in very painfully each time I'd like to zoom in. You won't do that. I could fit everything to the window. I could see the actual size of it. Um, or I can, I can fit the spread itself in a window. Right? There's different ways to zoom. These are the most convenient. I'm just going to delete all that for now. So those are some really common tools. We'll go over a few more once we get into actually laying out some pages. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about are master spreads. So we think about the design portfolio. Um, we can think about it as at the end of the semester, you're going to make a portfolio. It's going to have all your work in it, your name. It's going to be really beautiful. You're going to PDF it out and get that high grade that you'd like. We can also think about InDesign about uh, pinning up or preparing your projects, right? You have all these PDFs and photographs we've asked you to take. Maybe you want to set up a template in here with your name and the date and what project it is, and then dump all the PDFs and JPEGs into this program and hit print one time, right? And then go to the Snell and just pick it up. That'd be really convenient. And one way to think about that is, so if I zoom out, so Z or the icon, I can see, I went really far there, that I have five pages in this portfolio that I'm working on. Each individual, they're not facing. Over on the right-hand side, I have another uh, toolbar. If it's not there, raise your hand. The TAs can show you how to bring it up. If I select Pages at the top and pull that out, it's showing me all five pages in my document, which is really convenient when I have, let's say, a 200 or 300 page book. I can very quickly scroll to the page I'm working on. But at the top, I also have something called A Master. And if I double click on that, A Master, so again, I'm, I'm going to Pages, and at the top, A Master, I double click in there, I only have a single window. And in the A Master, I can apply text, lines, grid lines, et cetera. And I, I can then apply that to all the pages of my portfolio. Right? So if I wanted my name and ARC 1110 on the bottom of the page, I only want to do that one time. So I'll come in here with the text tool, right, grab that. I'll just make a text box, put my name in. Um, at the top, there's um, an A for the fonts and a paragraph symbol for the formatting. I want to just go here. I'm just going to change the size. Um, whoops, if I highlight it and change the size, I just want you to be able to read it a little bit. And then there's an entire set of fonts you can use. I'll go with DIN Pro, one of my favorites. Um, so you have fonts up here. You have the size of the letters, just like Microsoft Word or other programs. Um, you can make everything all caps, underline, bold, et cetera. Um, and if I use this arrow to minimize, I can also shortcut to my paragraph. So if you watch the text at the bottom, it's moving around in that text window I made. Um, so I'll go ahead and add in ARC 1110. I'll make this 18. So I'll put that maybe down on the left-hand side. Um, I can also, uh, let's see if that's here, yeah. So I can also, you see I have the text box here. It's kind of large, it doesn't fit my text. At the top of your screen, it may be way over to the right, there's a little icon that says um, fit frame to content. So if I select that, it's going to shrink that frame to exactly my text size, which is really helpful because I can place it down on the bottom of my page here. Let me open this up. What I can also do is select that text 
hold down that Alt key again. You can see that other arrow up here. And also holding down Shift, you can see I can slide, or if I don't hold Shift, I go anywhere. I can put this over to the other side. Double click in the text window, and I'll just use this paragraph to put this over here. I might say, whoops, project one. And underneath, I might say, um, thank God it's over. Uh, I don't know, let's see, maybe 10, 7, 2014, the date or something, right? So I have those two things in here. I may also, while I'm in here, say, I kind of have an idea about how I want to lay out my pages. Um, so I'd like to use some grids or markers on my master page that will apply to all my pages. Um, so if I go to the top here, under View at the top, I have guides and grids down here toward the bottom. And so I can go in here and I can hide guides, lock them, lock column guides, snap to guides, smart guides, etc. I can turn on an entire document grid, for instance. So I can see the whole grid, which is a lot of line work. It distracts me. But I could, I could lay out my page like a graphic designer using this. I go to View, Guides and Grids. I can just hide that. At the top, you see a set of rulers. Let's move this over. If you don't have that, raise your hand again. TA will come by. I can go to View, Hide Rulers, or Show Rulers, by the way. Or as you see here, Apple R or Command R. So I'm going to go up to the ruler, and I'm going to click in this black space up here, and it's going to drag down this blue line. Remember, it's light blue from our general settings. I'm going to put a line at this 8-inch mark on the left-hand side, if you can see that over there. Right? And it's, it's snapping right to that. And I'm going to click over here in the black. I'll drag this out into the middle of my page at, let's say, 8.5, which is half of 17. So now I have these two guidelines and my text on both sides. I can shrink this box up if I want. I won't change my text. Does that look centered to you? No, it does not. Oh, sorry, 8.5. See? Sharp, Jordan. OK, so now I have the, I've kind of set up a, a blank master page. I might want to make changes later, but I'm going to leave it for now. If I go back up to Pages, and then I double click on one, I'm back in my regular pages, but I cannot click on the text or the guides or anything. And if I scroll down, I notice that my name and project one and the date is on every page. It's really helpful because if I have my plan drawings or something created, I can just place it in here. I'll go over that in a few minutes. Um, and then I have a universal system. I know every sheet's going to come out exactly the same. If I have made with Autodesk product on my CAD drawings, I can bring it into here close the viewing box and I don't have to worry about it anymore. My name's going to show up exactly, right? You could put scales in this. You could put, I don't know what, but it's the same on every single page. It's really interesting, right? If I go back to the A master, I could right click on that and duplicate it and make a B master. Maybe on the B I want to like change something or for whatever reason I'm going to add text in the middle. When I go back to my pages, let's say I double click on one or two, if I right click with my mouse, I can say apply master to pages, right? And I can say actually apply the B to that page, right? And so if you're paying attention, I could make five or six master pages and apply them to all sorts of different um, regular pages throughout my document, right? If it was different chapters, different parts of an essay, or different parts of the project. So if I say B master here, that will apply that, what I did up here in the B master to only that page and not this one. I'm just going to switch this one back. A master. Okay. Let's see what's next on here. here. Okay. So when I go back to, I'm just going to delete this for now. When I go back to A master, there's also a good time to talk about um, layers. And layers are very similar in other programs to line weights in AutoCAD or uh, layers quite specifically in AutoCAD. If you go to the top of the same window, so again, I'm pulling out pages over here on the right hand side. And if I grab the corner of this, I can just pull this out a little bit here. At the top, I have pages, layers, and links. So underneath layers, you can see I just have layer 1 or 0. If I turn the eyes off, you'll see my name and all the grid lines disappear. Right? It's on, off. So what I want to do when I start a document, just like when I start an AutoCAD file or anything else, I want to be really organized about what I'm doing. So down at the bottom, there's this little, let me make this a little higher up here. This little thing says, uh, create new layer. Right, so I went to 
pages or layers over here. I click on create new layer. And if I double click on the layer itself, I can say, let's say grid lines for this one, for instance. And I can choose I want them to show up. Uh, I'll just say red is fine for me. I'll say OK. I'm still in my master page. If I go to masters, I'm still in the master page here. I'm going to grab by clicking on the top right to the bottom left. I'm going to grab those two grids. And you see this little icon pop up here? Watch when I click away, it goes away. You see that up here? I'm going to grab those lines. And I'm going to drag that to here. And I just said those grid lines are going to go on the layer grid lines. Make sense? Right, I'm starting to organize. This one I'll double click and I'll say text. Hit OK. And because this is already on the layer text, if I turn it on or off, it's there. What's really great is when I'm not in my master page, I can lock these so I don't accidentally move them around. Or I can turn them off when I don't want to see them and turn them back on when I do. I'll make one more layer in here. We'll use it a bit later. And I'll just call it content for right now. For you, it might later be drawings, or it might be photos, or you might want to be really specific about what you're doing. And I'll just leave that green. What's also interesting about layers is they have to do with what's on top of another layer. So if I made a big rectangle in here, for instance, like that, um, oops, let's make it some other color. You can see how that, uh, oh, I should make this a much different color. Okay. You can see how that's blocking my name, right? And if I click on this, it's on the content layer. So if I turn that off, I'm turning off the content. If I put content above or below text, right, I just slid this around, right? If I put it below text, you can see my name, sho my name shows up, right? You can see very clearly there. And if I put content, up at the top, it blocks it, right? So layers are really important because they're actually telling me what is, if, if this was a sheet of paper and I could move all these things around, it's telling me what's on the top and what's on the bottom. Right now, content will always be above everything else, no matter what I put in, and text will always be on the bottom. And if I switch that relationship, the opposite happens, right? So later on, sometimes you print your portfolio and your name is half missing. It's the white from some picture is hanging over your name, right? So you want to think very clearly about strategically about where you place those types of things. The other thing I just did now, which uh, made my screen nice and clean, and I didn't see my grids or anything like that, is I just clicked, I pressed the letter W. So if I press that on and off, I see a very clear screen or one with all the, the work in it. If I hit Shift W, I can just go full screen immediately in the program to exactly how this thing will look when it's printed. I can hit Escape and return back, hit W, W, this is all on a Mac, by the way. I think Shift W in a PC closes the file. So don't do that. Shift W, and I go full screen. This is brilliant because I can stop what I'm doing right away, go full screen, and see exactly what I'm producing. It's really nice. And I can just hit Escape and go back. So sometimes when you want to see how well the board's looking, what you're laying out, you just hit W, and you get an idea, or Shift W. OK, so I'm going to move this content. Oops. I'm going to move this content here. But I'm in the master page right now, I think. Yes. So I'm going to just delete this content for now. OK? So that's pages, layers, content. I'm going to shrink this up a little bit. Um, locking and visibility. I showed you that with the layers here, right? I might just go ahead and lock grid lines and lock the text. And go back to my pages and my, my, whoops, my base page here. And even though it's the master, I, still, I can't move anything around, right? So that's all locked up there. Um, so I went over the view, the grids, and the guidelines, baseline document, document grid. Um, let's talk about margins and columns. That sounds exciting, right? Let's make this a little bigger. OK, so I have my document here. I'm going to go back to my master, again to pages, master. And if I go at the top here, I can say, um, is it showing up there? Yeah, layout, margins, and columns. And in here, I can decide. My margins right now are just 0.5 all the way around. But maybe I want the bottom margin to be one inch above because I want a little bit more white space on the bottom of my page or something. So I can come in here and just switch that to one. And I can say OK. And you see that blue line came further in, right? So I go layout, margins, and columns. Oh, sorry. I changed all of them. That was not good. If I, if I break the link, wow, that is so direct, right? If I break the link. I can change one thing individually and not the others. 
If I do not break the link, they'll all be the same. Um, I'm going to break it and hit OK. So you can see the bottom blue line went up a little bit higher. And this is kind of nice because I'm starting to think as a graphic designer. I'm going to think about my work. I want my name and everything to be below this line. And I know above this line, all my work's going to exist. Maybe I know that between the grid line I made and this blue line at the bottom, I'm always going to put text in here. And I'm always going to put images up here. We'll get there in a few minutes. Right? And so I'm beginning to think about the balance of my portfolio. At the very end of the tutorial, I'll show you three student work portfolios from last year that I think are really successful. I'll only show them up to project one, so there's no, there's no teaser for what you're about to do for project two. Um, you get an idea, they used InDesign, the exact same program, but they had some thought in how they laid out the work. It's really important. And just when you pin up in your studio, it's really important to think about how you're laying out your work, what it looks like on the board, and how it looks like on the wall. And I think InDesign's a really smart way to do that. OK, let's see. Layouts, margins, and columns. OK, so that's up in Layout. Also in Layout, you can go to Pages and Add Pages, um, duplicate those master spreads that I showed. You can do the same by just clicking on Pages over here. And if I right-click on any of these, I can always insert, move them, duplicate them. So right-clicking on any element really gives you quite a bit of options. You can also number pages and things like that. We're not going to get into that today, because I want to actually put some content in these pages. Um, so we kind of have. A little bit of the basics laid out here. Um, let's go to image placement and editing. This is when we actually start using InDesign to put things down. So we're going to place images just like you might in a scrapbook, paste them into a page, or in AutoCAD, draw them, or something like that. So over here, uh, I'm going to return to my page number one. And I'm going to pretend this, this is my project or my portfolio or something. Um, the first thing to place an object in, we want to go to File place. Or once you do that once, you'll never again do it because you'll just use Command D. See the Command D up there? right? It's really fast. So I'll do Command D. And I'll bring up this window. Now I've already pathed it to the links that I shared with your uh, studio professors um, with 10 images I'm going to use today um, to put some, some work out. You could go to anywhere on your hard drive that you have a PDF, a JPEG, a Photoshop file, anything like that. Or you can use the ones that I've supplied you with. I'm going to hit Escape again. So when I do uh, Command D, I get some options down at the bottom. I have Show Import Options, Replace Selected Items. I'm going to uncheck all of that for right now. Um, and I'm just going to select one image. I'll select this model image. And I'll just hit Open. And so I'll see a little preview of that on my screen. I can move my mouse around. I see where it's going to go. If I click once, it's going to drop that image at the size it was actually made, right? So the camera made this image 14 inches wide, more or less, or something else, right? And I click away from it. Again, I'm using this, which is V or Escape. And I can move this image. It's a model image. I can move it around on the screen. I could align it. It's kind of locking into those grid lines up there. You see that? And if it's not locking, I can go to View, Guides and Grids, and I can um, turn on Smart Guides or Snap to Guides. Right? If I want to snap to things, which it's doing right now. So that's one way. So I just hit, I clicked once and it dropped it in. So I'm going to hit delete, take that away. I'll do Command D, grab that same image. Let's just grab another image. I'll say OK, open, right? It'll preview again. This time I'm going to click once and then drag my cursor. And when I drag, it's dragging the proportion of the raw image, the original file. So I'm dragging that. Maybe I'll drag it to there, right? I'll put that in. I'll just hit Escape or click somewhere else. Now, if I hit Shift-W again, I can see immediately just the image and the text. That's what it's going to look like when I go there. And I hit Escape, and I'm back. Right? Let's do something else. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to make a rectangle over here, Rectangular Frame Tool, the letter F. I went over that a little bit earlier in the tutorial. I'm going to go up here to the corner. You can see that little arrow pops up. It means I've, I've selected the corner. I'm going to drag this to here. Right, and it gives me a picture box. Now, if I don't select on the picture box and I hit Command D and paste something, it's just going to go there. Right, it's going to go anywhere. If I click this and then hit Command D, select my image and hit Open, it's going to put it right inside that box. See that? So if I double click in here, I can see the remainder, remainder of my image. Right? If I move this around, I see the image like moving around inside that frame. Right? So what's really clever about InDesign is I can drop a picture in here and actually edit exactly what part of it I want the audience to see. 
and maybe I just want to do that. And I click outside that box, and that's it, right? Now, if I click once, I just see the frame that I made that put this in. If I click twice, I see the extents of the actual image, right? Now, like I mentioned before, I can go to Free Transform Tool, or the letter E. And if I actually scale this, right, it's actually scaling, but still inside that frame, which is pretty cool, right? I don't have to waste time in Photoshop bringing that in and out. Uh, so I'm going to delete that. I'm going to take that away. I'm just going to go back to pasting. I'm going to grab this image. I'm going to click Show Import Options. Okay, so I was Command-D, Show Import Options, I'm going to hit Open. When I open it, it'll give me a question about uh, color and image, whether or not to show a preview. Um, so you can get a little more information about what you're placing down and then put the image in. Um, if I went back for a moment to my layers and unchecked the lockbox on these, I went back to, again, Command-D or File Place, and the import's on. When I hit Open, um, whoops. It should ask me what layer I want to put it on, but it's not. So I'm going to just bypass that right now. <laughs> My apologies. OK, forget that. That never happened. Um, again, Command-D, I'm going to place this image again. And I don't even need um, the rectangular box if I want. I can just come in here and make my frame. And then I can just adjust my frame later if I want. Right? Some people like to make the rectangular frame and do this on a master spread or on multiple pages so every single image is the same. Uh, that's one way to do it. Or I can just move this around and make, make my image bigger. So if I did something like this, for instance, I said, hey, I want you to get to page three of my portfolio and see this mega image, right? Just big image, full screen, nice, nice and large. You can see that, obviously, my image is not big enough. I could hit E and start scaling it and hope to get it to fit, go back and forth. I can also just click that box. Right? Um, let me just click away from it for a second. I'm going to click that box. And at the very top of your screen, there's a series of little icons. It says, fill frame proportionally, fit content proportionally, fit content to frame. We used that earlier with the text. Fit frame to content and center content. So if I say fill that frame proportionately, it's going to take my image and try its best to fill that, that, that entire um, window I made. So I might move this up and down. Maybe I want to show that really bad craftsmanship I had on the door. Maybe I want to pull this down a little bit here and just show the sky. So what's nice is if I change my window again, I'm still deciding my layout or something, I can just go back to this, and it's going to fill that frame out for me. If I use some of these others, it'll fit it uh, proportionally, which means it'll scale it. I don't like that usually. I can fit the content to the frame, which you can see the, the image just changed a little bit. Um, or if I go back to proportionate, right? So the really fast ways to Command-D, drop an image. And then if I don't like it, I can begin to move the frame around. Right? I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to say fill this thing proportionately. And then I'll just adjust this slightly. So there, there's one of, one of my images. Hit W. I got a nice white border around, a little extra down here. And I'm good to go, right? Let me see what else I want to do. Transform, edit original, layers and links. OK. So if I go back to layers and I click on this, I can see that it's highlighted, it's on content. So I turn content off, turn it on, and on or off. Now if I go to links, so we talked about pages, we talked about layers. Now let's go to links at the top. Links is going to be everything I place in the document. So you can see here, this is the file. If I hover over it, it tells me where on my computer I can find this. Um, and what I can also do here um, is kind of manage my links and know where they are. If I double click this in a multi-page document, it'll take me right to that specific link. Um, the other thing that's really interesting, you may be pulling links um, from all over the place, all over your, ha your laptop, right? So let me just do that a little bit. I'm just going to paste something else in here. Wait. Turn that off. I'll just paste another image. OK. I'll just paste something in here. OK, so if I go back up to uh, links, now you can see those multiple links are in there. Say I, you know, I spent a couple hours, I put all of my work in here, but I'm really disorganized because I'm working so hard on Studio that I don't even care about managing my files. But I want all of these links to be in the same place. I can just come up here. Um, sorry, this, so this, this puts the window back in. The thing right next to it, if I click, it's like a little set of lines. 
Um, let's see. Whoops, sorry. First, I have to highlight all the links. So I'm holding down Shift and clicking all of the links. If I go up here, I can say, um, where is this? Sorry, it's not this top one. Just right click on, on the three links that you copied. And you can say copy links to, which is really convenient. When that pops up, I can just say on my desktop, new folder, I'm going to call it links. And I want all of those links to go there. So everything in this file, if I go to my desktop for a minute, are now all placed here. So it's a really quick way to take stuff that's all over your computer in all different places that you're using in this one document and just put them all into one folder. I think it's a really nice way to stay organized. I'm going to put that down here. OK, so back in here. See the original? Okay. One other thing that's really great about InDesign is I may have this image that I really enjoy. It's working, it looks good, but I don't really like the color, so I want to edit it, but I don't want to like take it out and bring it back in or something. So I can click one time on the image. I can right click and say edit original or edit with. If I choose Photoshop, InDesign will stop for a moment or Photoshop will come over the InDesign file basically. It'll open up that exact thing I was looking at which is here in Photoshop. And I might come down, I'm not going to go over this, you've already had a Photoshop tutorial, but I might go to Levels, and I might bright, whoops, brighten that up a little bit. Maybe I'll punch this down, and then I'll go here and say Saturation, which I'm colorblind, so it doesn't really matter. So I'll just take some color away. There, that looks nice. I hit Save. Yep, save it there. Yeah, whatever. Save. OK, I'm going to close Photoshop. And when I come back to the file, you see that it, the image is still there. If I go to links and kind of pull this out, um, oops, I have to save this file first. Sorry, save. I'm just going to save it to my desktop. Um, if I go back in here to this image, I can right click and say relink, or I can right click and say, um, Let's see, I think it's just relink. I can go to where that file is on my desktop, which I believe is this one, and hit open. And it'll put in that new file, right, right where the one before it was. So I didn't have to move anything, I didn't have to change my layout, I just worked on the file itself, which I think is really um, convenient here. Uh, it's a nice way to manage all your content and then focus in on one drawing or one thing um, specifically. Um, the same thing happens, let me just post. Uh, let me just post an axon. So I can post this axon. One thing that we notice right away is that it looks terrible, right? If I do Shift W, it still looks terrible. The one thing um, I haven't mentioned yet with, with posting, these come out nicely because they're photographs. Line work, when you guys place your plans or sections or whatever it might be in here, if you go up to View again at the top, there's something called display performance. And so to, to maximize your hard drive and depending on how many large or small files you put in, the computer likes to default to typical display, which makes these lines look really terrible. But if I go to high quality display, it'll actually, um, it'll take a minute, this is kind of a big file, it'll actually take those lines and actually make them look the way they do in the, in the real PDF. Um, at some point that should happen. Or not. Yeah, huh? quality display. Let me try a different one. Oh, it's showing these. Like, this, so this is a PDF. It's showing the high quality. It's a hand drawing, but it's still a PDF. Um, not sure what's going on with this yet. Um, that's strange. If you go to fast display, it's really boring. Typical display gives you a little bit more, and this should be giving me high quality, but I don't know what's going on. Um, so that's one way to, to look at those down in there. All right, and then content management. Um, so that's kind of the basics of placing things into a file, having some sort of master page where I put my name or grid lines or something like that. I can come into here if I'd like. Um, let's say under layers, I could make a new one called content text maybe. And I could add something down here like uh, view from somewhere. I could narrate a little bit about what these images are and where they're from. Right? 
I can put that over there. And then when I start making a portfolio, I can say, hey, this is plan one, this is plan two, this plan was at eighth inch scale, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, hope that makes some sense. Um, and then I can keep going throughout the document, uh, moving things around, hitting W to see my layouts, and let's say making things fit a little bit here. Right. Okay. One other thing I want to touch base with really quickly, if I go back to this first one, it may be that I want to add a line or that rectangle or something I mentioned before. If I grab the line tool, maybe for some reason I want a line like at the bottom of every page. Um, do this in a resume. Maybe I want it like right there. So when I preview this, I want maybe a line just above my name or something. The one thing like Illustrator, when you were all at that tutorial, if I click this line and I come over here on the right to stroke, right, which is line weight, I can go to stroke and I can say, I want that line to be really, whoops, sorry, I click the line first. I want that line to be really thick or I want that line to be really thin or I want it to be dashed or I'd like it to be wavy. Please don't do that one. Um, and you can change the different things that the line is doing. I'll just leave it solid here. Um, and that's nice, a nice way to add a little bit of graphics to the page, right? Maybe you want a line at the bottom, maybe you want one on the top, maybe you're using to align your photographs or the center spread. Uh, just another way to add something. You may, for some reason, want to add like a rectangle or something. It's the, the same difference. We can put, we can put that in um, and it's on there and we can click on that rectangle and manage its stroke as well. You can make it much lighter, something like that, okay? All right, so it's 6.45. I want to show you a couple um, layouts in InDesign and then uh, the PDFs as well and kind of show you a couple things it can do. So I'm just going to close this now. Don't save. If I go back up here. Um, so I'm going to open a layout. Um, my graduate school portfolio happens to be done in InDesign. To roll in here. So you can see we have a whole bunch of different text, a um, whole bunch of different layers that I can lock or unlock. If I go to my page manager, these are facing pages, a little different than what I showed you before. I can scroll through the document, right? This is many more pages than we had today. And I can go to a very specific page and it'll show up on my screen here or a particular image or something. So it's a nice way to navigate now that I have a real portfolio going, right? I have multiple pages. I can come in here. If I, if I preview this, I can see that there's text along the bottom. There's page numbers. All of these things are layer manages, managed. They're in different fonts, different settings. Um, and I can go down in here and edit the you know, description of something. I have the name. And I've used the same things I've just shown you today to kind of organize that page, organize it both in my layers. I can turn all these things off, all away. I can lock them. And I, also with my pages. So it's a really convenient way um, to set up a portfolio and kind of manage where the grid lines are and how you see things. I'm going to hit W to clean that up. Okay, there's one way at the end of the semester you can take all of your work and kind of lay it out into one a portfolio using InDesign, using just a few things that are in this tutorial. And again, you can watch this uh, online to see that. Okay, I'm just going to close this. One other thing I wanted to do when we're talking a little bit about um, design in the portfolio, I just want to show a couple student examples. I gave this tutorial last year. We made a couple kind of basic pages and then started laying out our work. Um, so I'll show one here. Oops. If it'll open. Okay, so this is the final portfolio using InDesign. You can see there's a title, a mega image. We go to the next one, there's some sort of a content or a beginning page. Um, she's telling us the four projects that'll be in there, um, the four projects you'll do this semester as well. Um, and then there's a balance. Happened to be that we did a similar tutorial, right and left hand side of the page. She has a name of what the project is in the top right, and then she has her images organized, right? Sometimes there's a little blurb, what did I do at the Carpenter Center, what's it about, and then a nice big image, well lit, and a title at the top. And if I go through, you can see some consistencies. The titles are always at the top. Sometimes there's always this double page spread. See this one, comparing the image to the plan. And it's a very simple layout. There's no fuss, there's no additional graphics. It's really clean. She's pairing the sections with the images. And again, the text is just staying at the top. We know when we're on a, on a new project because if you can see at the top there, the text will change, right? Some images there. And then sometimes she just goes full screen, shows one big image. So you can violate or just negate all of what you did with the grid lines and just go with one massive image. 
I think that was a really successful project and portfolio. Here's another one. Okay, this one's using name at the bottom left, thing at the bottom right, maybe your instructor, the day, things I showed today. Um, two images split. Again, this time he uses a little bit more of that, that one drawing that everyone loves so much, the ground um, axon, ground level axon of Carpenter Center, an image and the text in the middle, right? But you can see in both these portfolios that there's some hidden grid line in the background that's kind of organizing the pages and where they're going to go. Again, he's splitting these two, going full page with that. And this one is full page, but he's pulling the serial sections right across the plan he drew, right? Although these are two separate files in his InDesign document, he, he's making them act as one. So that line that you see here is just drawn right over in InDesign with the line tool, right? So that's pretty cool. You don't have to do these both in AutoCAD. You can use InDesign to create that. And again, the sections, using small little numbers, section one or two, and making sure everything is aligned and balanced on the page. Okay, got one last one here. This one uses a little bit of a cover page, all white. Chronology again, name in the bottom left. And then kind of a similar outline, right? Text, learning space. You can even see that the grid line is used to manage the content of that image along with that paragraph of text, right? We can see that gap there, and this is organized. So there's all this invisible line work happening in InDesign that produces these really nice layouts. And these are not unlike what we'll ask from you, I believe, sometime in November, right? So we might return to this tutorial at that point in time. Okay, there's a little axon. I might argue this page is a little confusing, right? There's like, doesn't match the spread, all sorts of things going on. And then again, that technique, drawing right over it. All right, so that's kind of a catch-all of InDesign. I think it was pretty succinct. We have eight minutes left, um, which means you get to leave eight minutes early. Um, and if there's any additional questions after the tutorial, I'll just hang out here and I can answer some things or if you want to know a couple more things they might be able to do. Okay? Have a wonderful night.